let's continue our problem. We'll find the length of a curve between two points. So we have, oh, I, I think I, I, I derived that for you last time, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Made that up for you? Cool. So we have, we're doing an integral from our, our two, you know, bounds. And we're going to go square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared. Don't forget that's a derivative of the function. Don't forget to square it. Dx. So our function is 1 third x cubed plus 1 over 4x. <coughs> We've gone ahead and found the first derivative. So what we're doing here is we're just taking this first derivative, plug it into this function, or this formula, and we have this integral is left. After that, it's really just algebraic manipulation. The integral is not going to be hard in general. It means you have to manipulate it, though, algebraically before you can even do the integral. See, right now, you're stuck. I mean, you can't do anything with that. You've got to completely break this thing down and see exactly what we can do. You follow me on that? So, we square this, we get x to the fourth minus one half plus one over 16x to the fourth. So that's where that's coming from. We're just expanding that, just squaring it, distributing, combining some like terms. You're going to get this thing. Did you follow me on this so far? Now, let's continue going. Let's get rid of some of those parentheses. We have one plus this. The parentheses really aren't doing much. Really aren't doing much there. If it was a minus, yes, it would change every sign. But with that plus, not so much. Well, let's continue rolling here. We'll still be going from 1 to 3. We'll still have a square root and a dx. Inside the square root, I'm going to combine some like terms. I'm going to have 1 minus 1 half is going to give me 1 half. I'm going to have the x to the fourth. <coughs> and I'm going to have 1 over 16 x to the fourth dx. Quick head nod if you're okay getting that far algebraically. Now here's the deal. This thing right now just completely sucks. But I mean, you can't split up square roots by addition, can you? So you can't just start taking square roots of things, can you? So somehow, what you need to do anytime you see these multiple terms in here, and there's no substitution, notice there's no x's at all. No substitution is going to work for you here. Combine everything. Combine it all. And see if somehow you can manipulate the fact that the square root can be broken up across a quotient to try to simplify this expression. So in other words, when we have these fractions and all these terms, you're going to have to find a common denominator. You're going to have to somehow put all of these things together and then see what you get. <coughs> if it can be done, it will work out. Okay, if it can be done. Some of them, I mean, if I give you just a random function, it's not going to happen. These are very specific functions. So let's find a common denominator. What is your common denominator between 1 half x to the fourth and 1 over 16x to the fourth? 16x to the fourth. Very good. So we're going to go ahead and make all these fractions equivalent, but have the denominator of 16x to the fourth. What that means is we're going to get, let's go careful on this thing. One half is the same thing as 8x to the fourth over 16x to the fourth. One half is this. Do you believe me? I hope so. I'm the teacher. You should believe me. Although maybe I've lost your trust. Do you, are you guys okay getting from the one half to the 8x to the fourth over 16x to the fourth? You see it is one half, right? In other words, we're just multiplying by 8x to the fourth over 8x to the fourth. That's it. Plus... This thing, x to the fourth, is the same thing as 16x to the eighth over 16x to the fourth. That still equals x to the fourth. So that's an equivalent expression as well. This is this. Plus nothing I need to do there. It's already the denominator that I want. 1 over 16x to the fourth. Tie it all up with a dx. And switch some pen so we get a different step here. So that's the integral from 1 to 3. Big square root. Check out what happens. Now that I have that common denominator, I can make everything as one fraction with the denominator of 16x to the fourth on the bottom of our fraction. Also, I'm going to choose to write these in a different order. I'm going to write the 16x to the eighth, then the 8x to the fourth, and then the 1. Are you guys okay with that? All algebra right now. All algebra. 16x to the 8th. 
8x to the 4th, yes. Plus 1, yes. All over our common denominator, we're good to go. Do you feel okay with it so far? Now, I told you this is kind of a special function because when you look at it, notice how now I can break up my square root by the, the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to move up, up here. That's 1 to 3. Square root of 16x to the fourth on the denominator, sure. And also the square root of 16x to the eighth plus 8x to the fourth plus 1. You didn't know there's going to be so much algebra in this stuff, did you? Expecting hard integrals, they're not hard integrals. They're hard algebra to get to an integral you can actually do. It's different, weird. Do you feel it's still all right with getting that far? Tell me some cool things that happen, specifically with the denominator. Denominator. It does. Yeah, what's the square root of 16? Cool. X to the what now? Good, because you, you have a power of 1 half. Uh, numbers to the, or, excuse me, X once X you multiply, so you have a, a to the 4th to the 1 half, or a square root of X to the 4th. Either way, you're going to get X squared out of that. So denominator, not bad at all. Four x squared dx. Very cool. Let's work a little bit more on the numerator. In order for this to work out nicely for us, something has to happen. We either have to have a substitution that's present, have to, or, or we need to create some sort of a square. Why square? Yeah, so the square root will actually work here. Now, when you look at that, 16x to the 8th plus 8x to the 4th plus 1, it might not be easy to see, but that's a perfect square. Do you guys see the perfect square out of that? That is a 4x to the 4th plus 1 squared. Four x to the fourth plus one squared. Let's verify that just for a second. Four x to the fourth times four x to the fourth is sixteen x eight. Great. We're going to have two four x to the fourth. So that's eight x to the fourth, and then the plus one on the back end. So that's the appropriate factorization. If you wanted to, you could make a substitution uh, for x to the fourth equals y and substitute it that way, and then the factorization becomes a little bit easier since you don't have those eight eighth powers and fourth powers. It's a little bit hard to think of, but that's certainly the appropriate factorization. Why is that so important for us to do? Exactly. That has to happen. Has to happen. Or you got to be able to find a substitution for that to work. Otherwise, you're going to be kind of stuck. So square and square root, those are inverse operations. Those things are gone. We have 4x to the fourth plus 1 over 4x squared. Yes. Hey, we're almost home free. We got something that looks really nice. What now? You could. You could. I'm going to do it a little different way, but you could do that. What? If you did that, though, notice you have parentheses times 4x squared. Uh, sorry. You have 1 fourth and then x to the negative 2. So you'd have something a little bit awkward to deal with. Other ideas? Split it up. Split it up. Probably. Uh, substitution? No. No, don't do a substitution unless you absolutely have to. Split things up if it's easy to do so. So here, yes, split it up. Remember these when I gave them to you? Like the first first time we ever dealt with integrals, I gave you something like that. It had t though, it like a t cubed plus one over t squared or something. I said, think a little bit more about these things. Split them up when you can, because if you have like variables, you can combine those things. So four x to the fourth <coughs> over four x squared. Yes. Plus that. So on the roll. Let's simplify them a little bit. We got 4x to the fourth over 4x squared. That's going to give you x squared. When you do the 1 over 4x squared, please don't make the mistake of taking the 4 with the x squared. That doesn't happen. 
the force stays on the denominator. Do you follow? It, stays, it doesn't have a negative exponent. It doesn't even have an exponent. It's going to be x to the negative 2 over 4. That's the appropriate way to do that integral. You take the 4 up there, you're going to be off by a factor, by a large factor. You don't want to do that. Do you see why the force stays down there? Okay. Can you do the integral? It's not too bad. Not too bad at all, really. When we think about it, we're going to have x to the third over 3. That's an easy one. x to the third over 3. Plus, watch carefully. Remember that with integrals, you are adding, you're not subtracting. So can you please tell me, what does x to the negative 2 become? Perfect. Over what? Negative 4. Negative 4. Do you see where the negative 4 is coming from? Yeah. Get the negative 1 times the 4. That's negative 4. Before you go and evaluate, take care of this mess. Make it look prettier right here. This is going to be x to the third over 3. We're going to have a minus 1 over 4x. Minus 1 over 4x. Yes, no? We're just going to feel okay getting all that way down far, that far. Cool. Hey, it's just evaluation of this. we got to go from 1 to 3. We'll plug in the 3 first, so that's going to be 3 cubed over 3 minus 1 over 4 times 3 minus, remember we have a 1 right now, you can't just put a 0 at the end, we have a 1. So you have 1 third minus 1 fourth. If you do 9 minus 1 12th minus 1 3rd plus 1 4th, see where the plus 1 4th is coming from, first of all? Can someone do that on a calculator see what you get? Okay. Common denominator is 12 if you want to do it that way. 108 over 12 minus 1 12 minus 4 12 plus 3 12 huh? 53 over 6? Yeah, 53 over 6. Fifty-three over, what's the 53 over 6? The, the length. Of the length, that's crazy. But we just found the length of this curve, right? It, looked, it took us a long way to do it. But most of it is algebra. The only calculus you actually get to do is plugging the formula in. And from right here, let's see, right here to right here. That's it. After that, algebra, 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 evaluation, evaluation. So that's really what this is all about, is being able to use that formula, identify what goes where, and find the length out of that thing. So we found a length of 53 over 6. If it's in inches, it's inches long. It's kind of cool. It's really unique that we're able to do that, to take some random function. Actually, it's not very random. It's a specific function uh, because some of these things don't work out. Uh, and find the length of it, which is, is neat. How many will, were able to understand the example? Would you like one more? Yes. Any questions before I erase it all? All right. Okay, so. Let's do this one. f of x is now x to the 3 halves. 